I got time for one more, and I always got time for Ray. Ray's a great guy. Let me link it in chat right away. I didn't do that for Erad, and I, I should have done that. So link the video right away. This one's talking about Star Citizen 1.0. How many star systems is enough? I think that's a question that a lot of us have. Like, what what's good enough? Because I think we've all come to the realization that it will not be 100, right? So it's a short one, only uh, seven, eight minutes. So let's see what, what Ray's got to say. Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guy. This video is sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University and their online bachelor program in computer game development. More on that later. Recently, Chris Roberts and Richard Trier in a letter from the chairman described how they were working on a roadmap of the features that will and won't be included in Star Citizen 1.0 commercial release. Now, one of the features that everybody is likely presuming to be included in the won't be included is the long-standing stretch goal of having 100 star systems, which right now exists only that in lore and the web-based star map have 100 systems. But apparently the only person taking that 100 star system promise seriously was Todd Howard, who apparently felt that he needed to have 100 star systems in Starfield, which immediately had people worried that it would be, as they termed it, a mile wide and an inch deep. So then Starfield came out with it, and it was indeed judged to be a mile wide and an inch deep. So yeah, and for a whole number of issues. Right now, pretty much everybody who actually plays the game wants more star systems, but not 100. So the question that is, how many to start? I'm presuming that the planetary team hasn't simply been sitting idle while server meshing was being worked on and has a fair supply of assets on the shelf. So obviously we start small and then grow. Which is also the story of our sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. Oh, he gets right What into eventually it. would become SNHU started as two rooms above a storefront in Manchester, New Hampshire, as the New Hampshire Accounting. The last time we watched a video from Ray, he's always sponsored by these guys. Um, he goes, "I went to that school." Somebody in secretarial chat. school in 1932. Imagine the optimism to start a career school at the peak of the Great Depression. Imagine the optimism to enroll in one. They started with fewer than 10 daytime students and 35 nighttime students, which already showed a focus on being able to make education available to those who already had career obligations that would make traditional educational routes impossible. Which, leaving aside all the technology stuff, is really what online degrees are about today. During World War II, they changed focus to training military clerical skills and later in vocational programs for disabled veterans. Even today, current and former members of the armed services make up 40% of the students at SNHU Online. In the 1960s, they became a degree-granting nonprofit college under the name New Hampshire College. And in 1971, they outgrew the ability to find space to rent inside oh, of Manchester. Oh, SNHU again? Yeah, I mean, th this is, when you get sponsors, usually you get them often. It's just how it is on YouTube. And moved to their current 300-acre campus on the outskirts. You should be of happy town, for Ray. That's how I look at it. Which now has over 40 buildings on it. Between online and in-person, he's got a super cool, relevant sponsor. And every time I see this, I literally want to live in a house that looks exactly like this building. This is my dream house. is a barn-style house with big glass windows that outlook onto a beautiful forest. If I ever hit the lottery, my house would look almost exactly like this. The students. SNHU now has over 180,000 students in over 250 programs. Oh, you're the guy if you went to. that sounds interesting, yeah, visit snhu.edu slash raise guide and fill out the form to talk to a real person to learn more about this remarkable institution. That's snhu.edu. Easy to get sniped. Listen, I know you guys think America's crazy, but it's not really like that. Slash okay, raise guide. So returning, how do you know where to start? Well, at 1.0, there will presumably be a lot of new players. Where will they start? They will start with this drop-down list to pick their home system. Yeah, but I, do, I think this is all going to change. I think the whole, like, entry into the game is probably going to change and a lot. drop-down list will be their very first impression of the scope of the verse. And the very first impression is the Morgan are Freeman so of Star important. Citizen, yes. So, how many items should be in that very first choice that a new player will have to make about their home star system? It, for me, it goes two ways. There should only be one is an option that they can go, or there's multiple, but you are warned on the choices that you make. If you choose non-lawful ones then your reputation might be a little bit different you might have to align like you might be automatically aligned with a certain faction in pyro 
so you're able to spawn there or whatever. Um, if there's only one, it's not a choice. Well, yeah, I said that this might change completely. A lot of MMOs start you off in, in a uh, tutorial area, right? So that's kind of why I mean um, there can there, there's an option to only be one. Lots of MMOs, you hop in, you're in the tutorial area, then you explore out into the game world from there. Um, or we can right away jump into the deep end. I'm more along the lines of lots of new players in 1.0. Star Citizen is a very confusing and complicated game. Now you don't have to provide the new player experience at every location. You provide the new exper new player experience at, at one. You make it dialed in, perfect, great. And then you set everybody out into the world and let them experience the world of Star Citizen from there. It's a much simpler way to explain the game to players. It's a much simpler way to do things, right? Now, most of the people in chat are probably not going to like that because they're Star Citizen veterans and they want to jump in and not have to deal with that right away. Maybe there'll be some option to avoid that tutorial area or something of some kind, but maybe there's a benefit to doing it or so on and so forth, right? So I think it's an option. I think it's a legitimate option, but I think Ray's going to go a different direction here. The answer is actually well understood by psychologists and game designers. The answer is three. Then shalt thou count to three. No more, no less. A choice of one seems pointless, and a choice of two seems limited. Neither count thou two, except... There should be no choice, is my opinion. Not thou then proceed to three. And choices of four or more begin to seem overwhelming. Four? Shall thou not count? To someone without a lot of experience to go on. Five is right out. Now, an early stretch goal included backers having an extra choice of starting location. And that's fine because for early backers, this won't. Now, I didn't know about that. I forgot about that, I should say. That kind of makes it where my idea kind of gets thrown out the window, especially if it was a, a stretch goal, then you're kind of stuck to that as, as CIG, right? Maybe so be their first exposure to the verse but for those entering the verse for the very first time what are the three choices that they should have three shall be the number thou shalt count and the number of the counting shall be three and let me say right up front that pyro or any system like it should not be on the list taking a completely inexperienced player in an aurora and putting them in pyro is almost certainly going to be a disaster and anybody insisting that new players be able to start in pyro is likely just being a predator looking for easy victims so stanton of course is in the list of three but what should be the other two one clear choice is terra as is the political center of the uee yep and in my opinion the third slot should be ellis i think terra should be that starting location that you're forced to go in by the way it's an interesting system with a wide variety of planets and some very beautiful ones it is the center of the murray cup racing so that a lot of people have been talking about ellis a lot of people have been talking about ellis ellis is an arena commander right that is yeah. a unique factor its habitable planets are full of nature and resorts and casinos and other entertainment ventures it's also like in the experience that we've seen in one of the planets in ellis it's not far off from other locations that we have now. It's almost like a mix between Microtech and Clio. If they were like smashed together into one planet. So it Lots rounds of out a trio of a business nexus, a, pine trees. a political nexus, and a popular entertainment and leisure nexus. So in terms of the USA, it would be like having new... Wait, 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 wait. So my man chose three lawful systems, though with no unlawful did he just i guess he's not ignoring pyro but he's ignoring pyro as a starting location so he's kind of along the same lines of thinking that i am like all of these would be your haven areas that you go through the tutorial but you have a choice of where you would go and then you venture out okay okay New York, Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles as the three starting choices. So with those in place, it becomes a game of connect the dots. And not just that, but connect them in interesting ways. Okay. But one thing that theoretically could happen and probably will happen is the map that we're looking at 
is going to change. And the dots that connect now may not connect to the dots that we see on this map and may connect to other. They can move these everywhere and they probably should to make things as interesting as possible now that the game is being pushed forward a little bit more and they can make things make sense from a video game standpoint and then as well as a lore standpoint if they want as well, right? Stanton, of course, is directly connected to Terra and Terra connects to both Pyro and Stanton, so that's our first triangle route. The next obvious choice is the Magnus system. Magnus connects to both Terra and Stanton and connects to Ellis. So just with Magnus, we have another triangle route and have all of our starter systems connected to each other. There was an event in EVE where aliens destroyed the Stargates and created new ones. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you can even like make it lower based. Uh, or in our game, don't uh, jump points get destabilized and new ones are found, things like that. You don't even need aliens in this case to do it. It could just happen. Magnus is also an interesting system. It reminds me in some ways of Pyro, a system that has seen better days, but rather than from a natural catastrophic event, a political catastrophic event, the UEE pulling out its major shipyards from it, and thus it becoming the headquarters of Drake Interplanetary. But there are other systems that CIG have hinted that they are in development work on. Nix is the home of Levski, which CIG did one. have temporarily located in Stanton. Where is it? Oh, it's all the way over here. Okay. And CIG has said they've done work. Oh, and that's connected to Odin, which is where uh, Squadron takes part, right? On having part Levski of reworked to current standards. Nix connects to Pyro, and so that fits with a starting mesh of planets. We also know that Odin is the setting of Squadron 42. There you go. So substantial work must have already been done on it. Odin connects Is it to entirely in Odin? So this would mean three starting mostly safe systems, Stanton, Terra, and Ellis, and three more challenging systems for advanced players, Pyro, Magnus, and Odin, with players who have pledged during development and have the choices of all six, but everyone else only having the genuine starter systems. Gotta say, I'm really loving his take here. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty balanced. In the I, and and just calling experienced locations, experienced locations. We're not doing PVE, PVE. We're not we're PVP or PVE. We're not even having those discussions. It is inexperienced versus experienced, and that is really all that matters. And yeah, the ones that are more open for PVP are going to be for experienced players. But don't we also hope that those are going to be more challenging PVE experiences as well? I certainly hope hope so um there's been very few videos of rays that i've agreed with 100 percent um i do think that there should just be one spawn location i think we should spawn on terra the the center of the uee experience and like to be a citizen you are it is star citizen this is where you maybe gain your citizenship or go through a ceremony of becoming a citizen right that could be where we start we go through the tutorial and then bang Right, we're good. Did my camera just turn off? I think I just saw that. Uh oh. Um, so we might be running into camera problems in a moment here. But regardless, the that's where I think things should go. Uh, that's what a lot of MMOs do. It is what it is. But you have a cutscene at the beginning. You do it in Terra, and then you spread out through the galaxy. Is my preference. But I am totally in agreement with everything he said, because it's very similar, but you just have a little bit more choice. Those six I would regard as the absolute minimum for a 1.0 release, with more following on a regular basis, as in more than one per year. What would be some of my favorite early ones? Oh, you definitely will looking be able to Looking at those with multiple connections of the first six, I would look at the Hadrian as the first interspecies trade hub, Tyrannus yep. with its particularly dense asteroid belts, and Castra as a militarized trade hub. So we need to have, don't you think on 1.0 release, we need to have a Xi'an system, a Banu system, and a, uh, a Vandal like controlled system, which is probably one of the ones that were mentioned as well. Do we need the aliens involved in 1.0 is a very interesting question. Frankly, there are a lot of good systems believe, in order yes. to choose from, but equally important is not to choose ones that gets the explorable verse strung out in a single line. That's boring. Always look to be creating explorable loops. How about this? How about this? Because I, I think a lot of you guys are going to say no, because it seems like a lot of work. What if we meet in the middle? Yes, you can go there. 
yes, you can interact with maybe they they'll be in their ships, but maybe you can't go to their landing zones yet or something like that. You don't get permission to land until later. Maybe we meet in the middle there. Finally, an update on our Grow the Channel ship giveaway. We continue to make progress towards awarding some lucky player the Zippy Zazzy Zafta Exemption as give him a cargo, five. as well as towards the marvelous multi-user, multi-role mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video. Just be a member for automatic entry or subscribe and comment with the secret word. But I think this and the secret word there. for this video is the third starter system that I suggested. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond with Ray's Guide. Nice. I think that was a really good video. Again, I don't often agree with almost 100% on, on Ray's stuff, because you, you Then you, lobbest thou thy holy hand grenade of Antioch towards thy foe? Who be <laughs> Okay, he's just doing the, that call me completely off guard. The, we don't often agree 100% with them because it's usually like the PvE versus PvP takes, and I thought he went really balanced here and focused on the right things, and um, I think he nailed it. So, really good video. Let me link it to you guys so you could scare your friends at the end as well. If you want to share that with them or watch it yourself. Um, but yeah, really good take from Ray, and it's hard to disagree.